Okay, so this video is going to be about what to bring when you're fishing a tournament as a co-angler. And that can be a BFL, a Bassmasters Open, ABA tournament, whatever, club tournament, or just going to fish with a friend. I'm going to make a video about what you need to bring and what's the right amount to bring when you're fishing as a co-angler. Because whenever I first started fishing three or four years ago as a co-angler, there weren't many videos about it about what all to bring and what to expect and all that. So that's what my goal is today is to make a video about it. So I'm gonna show like a more in-depth, like in-depth look in a minute. But basically this right here is what I bring to hold my plastics in. This is a little Plano, it's called a Z series. The Plano Z series is a roll up bag. Here I'll unroll it and show you. It's got six different compartments and it rolls up. And I'm not sure how many bags I've got in there but it holds a lot, and I've kind of got it overstuffed right now. Uh, it can it rolls up tighter than it than I've got it here, just because I've got so much stuff in it. But yeah, that's the Plano Z series wrap up bag. That's what I put my plastics in, and then this is just a little Cabela's tackle bag, and it holds four 3600 size boxes in here. And so you know I've got pliers cutters, all kind of stuff here. I've got my coal tags. That's important. You want to bring those. And then this is something that is probably the most important thing I would say. This is a little Milwaukee keychain tape measure. It's It goes out to 6 feet, but really you only need, you need it for 12 inches or 14 inches, 15, whatever the limit is. Because I have fished a tournament before and my boater did not have a measuring board. And luckily no fish that I caught were short that day. But if they were close, I would have been screwed. So this right here is something that's really important to bring. I, I found this one day after that tournament, and I've just got it clipped on here ever since then. And then I usually bring between five and six rods. Some people say bring seven, some say five, but I usually bring between five and six. And then this right here is called a one tie. It's just a little, it secures these rod gloves because I've, ha I've lost three or four just flying down the lake during the tournament but it, when you put this right here on it it really keeps them secure so they don't fly off but yeah I normally bring five or six rods usually one or two spinning rods depending on where you're going like this weekend is the first BFL for the Bama division at Eufaula so I've got one spinning rod and then five casting rods but say I was going somewhere like the Smith Lake tournament in May I'd probably have two spinning rods and then four bait casters. It just depends on what the lake is and what you think they're going to be biting, but between five and six rods is usually the right amount to bring. Okay, now I'm going to show a little bit more up-close video of what I was talking about earlier, but I'm recording on my phone now. The GoPro had a weird light to it, so if it looks different or sounds different, that's why I'm on my phone now, but this is that Plano roll-up bag I was talking about. It's got six different compartments, so on the bottom... I put my trick worms and finesse worms and stuff like that. Right here, I've got u tail worms, curly tailed uh, Senko type worms, and then drop shot worms in this one. And here, I've got like some Zoom Z swimmers, Rage swimmers, the Kitek style swim baits. And usually, this is the compartment that I differ from depending on the tournament. Like, I figure I might be throwing a chatter bait. Or an Alabama rig this weekend that you follow. So, say I was going to, like I said earlier, Lewis Smith Lake. Well, I might have Ned rigs or a finesse style worm in this one. This is the one that I vary depending on the tournament, but the others, they stay the same no matter where I'm at. But yeah, this is where I've got my Kitek style swim baits. And this one, I've got more swim baits. This is more like trailers and uh, the Yamamoto Zayko for the jack hammer and then some flukes and spinnerbait trailers grub stuff like that and up here i've got my green pumpkin uh plastics creature baits like brush hogs and chunks and speed crawls and then up here i've got the same thing in black and blue like some black and blue brush hogs and flipping baits just stuff like that so i've got black and blue green pumpkin uh trailers kitek style swim baits curly tailed worms Robo worms and wacky worm stuff, Senko's top baits, and then this is finesse worms and trick worms right here. And so this, this Cabela's tackle bag, it holds four 3,600 boxes. 
So here I've got my, uh, my terminal tackle. And this is a little trick that I figured out. It's just a paper towel because I mean, these are, these are cheap boxes. They're not going to be like your Bass Mafia or your, the Plano Edge, you know, your stuff's going to slide around more, but this is just a paper towel that I put over it. It fits perfect and it keeps your stuff from jumping out of the compartments. I mean, I've got my, my tungsten, Carolina rig weights, beads, pop bobber stoppers and all that here. And then I've just got my different style shaky heads, uh, wacky worm hooks, just all kind of different stuff. I mean, it's kind of hard to to downsize all the terminal tackle you have and put in here, but that's the way that I do it. Just, but yeah, that little that little paper towel that helps a lot. And then so this one right here, I got some crank baits in. You know, so I got my jerk baits on the bottom, got some red square bills up top, some chartreuse shad color, some bandits shad color medium running crank baits, and then crawl color medium running crank baits and then in this box if it was warmer outside i'd have some top water in here so i'd have some spooks popper stuff like that but since it's january i've got just more crank baits so i've got some rattle traps red eye shad some more uh bandits and these are a little bit deeper running crank baits like a wiggle wart and a strike king 3xd and then up here i've got some more like uh not really shad wraps just finesse crankbaits i guess you would say and then some some bandit 300s up there and then this box is what i put my jigs spinner baits and if it was summertime i'd have frogs in here but so i've got some you gotta have the fire crawl color chatter baits of course this time of the year and then i've got some white chatter baits and swim jigs my black and blue swim jigs, chatter baits, and then some finesse jigs. And then down here is my green pumpkin chatter baits, jigs, all that stuff. And then over here, I've got my spinner bait and a couple, couple jigs that didn't fit over here. But that's where I put my spinner baits and all that stuff on that side. And then in the tackle bag itself, you know, here's here's what I was talking about earlier, that six foot tape measure. That's a keychain. Uh, here's my cold tags. You know, I bring six cold tags. That way if I've, if I'm lucky enough to catch five fish and I catch a sixth one, I've got the extra cold tag on this compartment. I put my line, extra line, like leader line. And then say I bird nest a reel. I'll, I got some 15 pound mono. I'll just throw in there if I really need to, but usually that's not the case. So that doesn't happen too much. And on this side, I got a spare reel some real magic and then this is just some spare treble hooks um this compartment this front was usually where i put my uh my phone and wallet and stuff like that in this one and then I got, I got a pair of pliers that i just throw on top of the tackle boxes and i put them back in there right here i've got all my dies it's kind of hard to see i got a scale but like my chartreuse die and then the die pins a lot of people that's a huge a huge deal is fishing as a co-angler, the uh, bringing dies in people's boats. So the Sharpie style markers are great. I bring the regular, you know, spike it in the little bottle, but I'm I, you got to be very careful. You don't want to spill uh, chartreuse dial over somebody's $80,000 boat that you don't even know who it is. But yeah, so the pins are really good. I'd recommend to bring those. And then up here, I've got like the stuff that I need the most. I got cutters i got a sharpie to color my braid uh a lighter to burn the end of the braid some scissors fingernail cutters to cut my line and all that stuff and then here here's this uh tie that i was talking about it's called a one tie uh i don't know you probably get it at home depot or walmart or something but it just you just tighten it on your rods so the uh your rod sleeves don't fly away and then this is like i said I, i'm bringing six rods to you follow so you know i've got like a little i've got a spinner bait and a bandit and a chatter bait jig a swim jig and a little shad wrap tied on now but usually that's how many i bring is six rods so yeah that's that's pretty much what i bring the only thing out here that i've got that I bring to the tournament that I don't have in the video is a life jacket. Most people have an extra life jacket, but I just like to bring mine. The only reason I don't have it is because it's still in the boat, but yeah. So that's pretty much pretty much all that you need to bring as a co-angler. That's, that's a good amount. I've never had any complaints bringing this much. And then, of course, you know, you might want to bring a Walmart bag if you've got some snacks and drinks and stuff. But if you have any questions, just drop them below.
I forgot to mention this earlier, but usually I bring my rain gear too. Um, sometimes, you know, it might not rain, but if it does, you're going to want it. And that's, I forgot to mention that in the video, but yeah, the, the life jacket and the rain gear is all I forgot to leave out actually in the video, but I would recommend to bring that too.